Well, folks, I just wanted to show y'all some. It's been going on the last few years, so um, everything, but it's also affecting ice. I guess apparently it costs more to freeze water these days. Look at that, seven pounds. Okay, two years ago this was 10 pounds. Then last year it went to eight pounds, and now this Thanksgiving it went to seven pounds. Also, ice two years ago was 99 cents a bag, then went to 129 a bag, 149 a bag, 249 a bag, and now it's 299 a bag. And that was on sale for 50 cents off because normally it's 349 a bag for seven pounds. Ridiculous people. So we're trying to hit the Zamboni out here. Good shot, Toro. Yeah. You might hit him right there. That's gonna be close. Come on. <laughs> so if you guys have never been to Top Golf, you get points based on how close you get to that flag. The further out you go, the more points you get. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it's crazy, right? <laughs> Some butter going and we got some mushrooms we're gonna make some you know, all the most a big ass package of mushrooms we're gonna make a bunch of uh, green bean casserole here it's one of those love hate top things some people love green bean casserole most people do and some people hate this shit we're gonna make it from scratch here pretty much we're gonna use some canned green beans but uh hey should be all good anyway let's start sauteing these mushrooms first then we'll go on to Next step. And when you're really busy working and don't have time to go to the store until the day before Thanksgiving, uh, this is what you get. The really expensive cream here. Five dollars a pint. Wowzers. I hope it's good cream. I hope that milk, I hope the cow that made that milk eats the best golden grass and 11 herbs it can find for a $5 pint. And uh, of course I'm at home now and I stopped by the store and they don't have no damn herbs, no rosemary, no thyme, no nothing. But need not fear the chef is here and we're gonna put some um, we got some dry Italian seasoning. It'll, it'll work just the same for what we're doing. And it's always better with some fresh herb, but uh, hey. We'll take this dried stuff from China. It should work just fine. Alright, just uh, ground up some fresh black pepper now. We're going to put some garlic, uh, granulated garlic powder in here. 
I don't have any fresh garlic. But this will work just fine too. And I'm not putting any salt in this because I'm going to show you what we're going to do. We're basically making like a mushroom soup base. And we're going to throw a little chicken bouillon in there. So we don't want to add any salt because it will be too salty. Alright, so we have switched pans here to a mega pan to hold all this stuff. I should have done in the first place. I said, man, I need a bigger pan. Let's see if you got one right there. So, oh, yeah, I do. I don't know. What the hell's wrong with my brain? I've been working a lot lately. So, uh, trying to get everything ordered and planned for the holidays. So. My brain is a little tired. All right, our next step is to add this high dollar. Volumen's cream. Maybe it's Volman's. I don't know. Family Farm. We'll look at it in a second. That'll kind of stop that stuff so it don't burn on the bottom there. Get some moisture in there. It smells good. It smells good and fresh. It doesn't even have a date on it or anything. So There we go. And we're going to need to add a little bit of uh, milk to this. We're going to let this kind of simmer for a little bit and uh, break down those mushrooms a little bit. Now at this point I'm also going to add two bouillons of the caldo de pollo. That's yeah, kind of always kind of bust them up and then they'll break on down. And uh, if you're not familiar that's the Nor brand. And this stuff's cheap. It's only like you know, 80 cents a damn package or whatever for six of them. All right, we're gonna add a little bit of milk to this so we can let that reduction thing happen. All right, we're gonna add some milk to this now. There we go. And uh, I'm just gonna let this simmer for a little bit. Uh, probably about 20 minutes here, let the mushrooms kind of go ahead and cook on down and break on down. And then we'll thicken this up a little bit. Start adding the green beans. We'll check out the saltiness. We might need to add one more bouillon to it. We'll just see. Because remember, the green beans don't have no uh, very little salt in them. It's so always when you're making something like a base for something, you got to remember whatever you're putting in there, if it ain't uh, got salt in it, it's going to absorb it, so it's going to weaken the intensity quite a bit. So you just got to keep that in mind. So I was pretty curious about this here because uh, this is the only cream they had left in the store. You know, usually they have like uh, whatever local dairy you got. No, oh, they was all gone. You see, our family has been refining the art of making high quality farm fresh milk in over five generations. We take pride in caring for our cows and doing our part to sustain the future. I thought I'd give you a little sermon there. Anyway, uh, Shakewell, this is from... Uh, Volman or Volman Dairy Processing LLC. Uh, I have no idea where this place is from. Anyway. So I just went to that website there and uh, this place is in uh, Comanche County, which was uh, about an hour north of Atlanta where we were just the other day. So uh, yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Anyway, if you want to make really good green bean casserole, this is a fantastic, easy recipe. It does take a little bit of time because you got to go through some more processes. But, uh, man, everybody always asks me, can you make the green bean casserole for our gathering? It's uh, very, very popular. People love it. You can taste that you didn't open up a can of Campbell's soup and make the damn shit instead, you know? So, uh, back in the day, I used to actually get my own green beans, blanch them, do every damn thing from scratch. But, uh, you know, uh, Del Monte green beans are really good, so i cutting that part out. And I used to make my own fried onions. I'd do my own, uh, like, tobacco fried onions. But uh, we are going to do canned onions. And I, I'm up to store brand. They're all about the same. French's I like really good, or Durkies. But, you know, it is what it is. So, if you notice, I didn't add any onion to this when I was sauteing the mushrooms because I have found that works really good is when I mix this, I'm gonna, I buy one can to mix into the stuff and one can to top it with. And that's the key, key secret right there. And making your own uh, mushroom stock here. 
makes a big difference. Way better than the crap you buy, you know, in a can. Right, I think we're about right here, about just about righteous. And I'm gonna use a cornstarch slurry instead of a roux because I already got the butter in there from doing the, uh, the mushrooms, so taking them up. So I gotta get the butter flavor in there. I don't really need to make a roux for this one. So you can see this consistency here is about like soup consistency, which is great. You can take this off, put a few croutons in there, and have a delicious dinner of you know, soup. But uh, I need to be just a little thicker because we're adding those green beans. Now, strain the water off of them, but they're still going to have a lot of liquid in them. So it needs to be a little thicker where it'll actually like stick to them green beans. So I'm going to go a little bit thicker with it. So when you pull your whisk out and you see them peaks pull away with it, that's the consistency you're looking for right there. Perfect. All right, let's throw our green beans in. We're going to cut the fire off at this point. We're going to bake this in the oven anyway, so fire off. Let's throw our cold green beans in. I'm going to share all this. Well, there we go, folks. Six cans of green beans in. Let's give this a stir. Turn this fan off here so we can hear. So you can see a little bit of that water came out of the green beans, even though I strained them. It always does. Anyway, just give this a stir up real good. I'm going to show you all what I do here. So I buy a can of these here turkeys, of these things. Put one can in, like I was talking about earlier, and then one can at the top. So that is the place of our onions. Instead of putting like a raw onion when I sauteing the uh, mushrooms earlier. Ooh -wee, there we go. Look at that, folks. And I guarantee you, if you make this, I showed you exactly how to make it and all the ingredients. This, there's no hidden ingredients. Uh, everything you saw I put in here is in here. And if you make this at your house, for your family, by the time you see this, it's going to be past Thanksgiving, but always Christmas. Give your family a nice Christmas present and make this for them. Absolutely delicious way to make green bean casserole. And green bean casserole is good besides just Thanksgiving. I love this shit. I mean, have Thanksgiving in June or something. Christmas in July. Mm. So we got the other can of uh, fried onions here. We're going to put it right up on top. Bake this off and we will be good to go for our Thanksgiving feast with our family and friends. Damn, look at the size of that one. It's like a whole blooming onion in there. We have the damn outback. Anyway, just spread that out good. I'll just eat this once I use this as my spreader. There you go, folks. Beautiful. Green bean casserole. You can make for your family. Super easy, super tasty, and super damn. Well, it's just delicious. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you guys next time. Well, another load ready to go. Six stacks and uh, ten bundles. Yeah. That's the oak we just split. So, uh, very nice looking oak. We're about to crack the seal on this yellow rose of Texas. Now, this was produced, look at this bottle's around 50 years old. So, so this is uh, aged 135 months. And this bottle was purchased in what year was this purchased? In? Around 1970. So, this is a uh, man, this is like over 50 years old, I believe. Let's drink it. We just cracked that open and that smells 
Hmm, take a whiff of that. Smells like uh, Jim Beam. <laughs> it's, it's called bourbon whiskey. That was actually quite smooth. It's your old pro. That was, I didn't expect, I, I thought it had more bite, man. Smooth. It's really not bad. Yeah. 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 Well, folks, I want to thank you for joining us today on this crazy adventure. Uh, as you can see, I got uh, hired a guy to come help uh, cut some of these trees up and all. So that was huge. Because uh, I don't have time. I'm just too busy. Um, and what do you think about that damn bottle of Jim Beam? Shit, man. I figured out. We looked it up. It was... Uh, that was my grandfather's bottle of uh, whiskey. And uh, after my grandmother died in, uh, when did she die? S January of last year. So January, 2020. Yeah. So we were cleaning out the house and all and found that bottle. And I was like, that is too cool. So we uh, decided to uh, have it for Thanksgiving in uh, remembrance of my grandfather. So pretty cool. And from what we can tell, looking up online, it was purchased somewhere around 77 i think it was produced in 76 77 era so it was 12 years old or thereabouts that means it would have been produced somewhere around 65 or so so quite an old bottle of whiskey and it was super smooth i mean unbelievably smooth and uh there's no telling what that thing was worth uh but it was worth a lot more to us because of you know, the uh, circumstances of being my grandfather's and all. So, super cool. Anyway, thanks for joining us. I hope you uh, make that green bean recipe at your house because it is delicious. And it's got down to about 20 degrees out here, and I'm standing outside right now, and I'm going in to get warm. Thanks for watching.